Hello, great viewers of Accolade Lifestyle and Events. It's good to have you. Today, I have one event to show to you and the other one is going to be an interview, exclusive interview with the DG of NAPTIP, Barrister Julie Oka Donle, the present DG, who is already making waves, doing well, already, even a short time. And also, we have the event for the day that took place at Conference Center that is celebrating 91 years by Daily Times. Daily Times Heroes Award. Well deserving award for the award days. I want to say a big congratulations to you and for Fidelis and Masike. Your event was well attended and it was a great one. Congratulations to you. For my viewers, I hope you're going to enjoy yourself tonight. Don't go away. I'll be right back. It's good to have you today on Accolade Lifestyle segment of our program. Our guest for today is an outstanding lady with great pedigree, barrister Julie Okadonle. Julie Okadonle is a legal practitioner who has worked with reputable firms. She was appointed legal advisor company secretary of the Nigerian Capital Market Institute an affiliate of the Securities and Exchange Commission Abuja. On resignation, she went into private legal practice and worked with Legal Field and Co. She later moved on to UBA Trustees Abuja, where she headed the Abuja branch in Northern Region from October 3, 2006 till August 1, 2007. In August 2007, she was appointed Executive Assistant to the Bayesa State Government, Government House until September 2012. She worked as Deputy Head of Chambers with Legal Resources Alliance from November 2012 to May 2013, when she left to set up her legal firm. Until her recent appointment as Director General of National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NACTIP, she was the principal partner of Julie Oka and Co., a firm of legal practitioners. She is also the founder of Julie Donley Kidney Foundation. She has attended various workshops, seminars, and is a member of the following professional bodies Nigeria Bar Association, International Bar Association, FIDA, Nigeria Institute of Management, Securities and Investment Institute, Chartered Securities and Administrators International. Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. She is an amazing mother of two, very passionate about humanity, humble and hardworking. You're welcome on Accolade Lifestyle. Thank you very much. Wow, I'm really excited being in your office and um, we actually prepared to come to your office looking at what we've been reading on the news, on the internet, what you've been doing within this short time. Without that, we would have waited a bit longer, but we said to ourselves, no, we have to be a part of this movement of yours. And we know that God will help you and he will see you Amen. through. All right, having said that, ma'am, how would you describe the scourge of human trafficking in Nigeria? And do you think Nigerians are really aware of the enormity of, the, of this problem? Yeah, actually, the scourge is very, very high, unfortunately. And um, Nigerians, you know, have accepted this cultural practice whereby um, they send their children off to raise their relatives to bring them up. They also, I mean, give them to friends to send their children abroad for better life as they think. Unknown to them, this, has, this, this was a form of trafficking that was allowed to take place for so long undetected. But I think they are beginning to be aware now, more conscious of of um, trafficking. Um, I think Nigerians are not really aware that it's part of trafficking, you know, sending your children to labor in someone's house as maid and uh, hawking and all that. What people perceive as trafficking is, you know, when you send people abroad, just take them away from Nigeria, take them to other countries for sex slavery and all that. So really, we would like you to throw more light on. Well, you know, um, trafficking comes in two ways. We have internal trafficking, we also have external trafficking. Internal trafficking takes place within Nigeria. This is a situation where the victims are trafficked from one part of Nigeria to another to work as housemates and their salaries are being paid to the trafficker and not directly to them. Wow. Now we have the external trafficking where these girls are taken out of the country for sexual exploitation. They are paying their masters after being sexually exploited wow. by the, their clients, mm -hmm. if, if you may. So what are the challenges NAPTIP is facing and how do you want to go about resolving them? 
Well, the challenges we face actually is funding. In Nactip, we have a very brilliant team of sound, professional, hard-working people who are ready to work. So the only problem or challenge here is funding. But I must give it to the international partners that we have. We have a lot of international partners, UNODC, IOM, the Spanish Embassy, German Embassy, British Embassy. They've been doing a lot for us. But we need much, much, much more partners. And the, 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 the trafficking scourge as it's not to do with just the federal government because the federal government cannot do it alone and that's why we have these international communities coming strongly to partner with us we also need private individuals like you and i doing you know coming together to fight this scourge. there's a lot more than that each and every one of us can do to fight this scourge. Wow. thank you Given the fact that trafficking is within the country and through the borders, are you getting corporations from destination countries? Well, we're getting corporations from destination countries. The EU, we work with them, the Spanish embassies, we work with the German government, the Italian government, the British government, on, on ways to collaborate better and work better. Um, but what we really want these destination countries to do for us is to help us bust these rings of traffickers there mm -hmm. because so far it's been a one-way traffic it repatriates the victims back to us in nigeria and we prosecute the traffickers when we find them but so far we've not been able to get a case where traffickers are prosecuted in the destination countries and this is very worrisome to me and this is one thing i would really really like to see and then i'll believe that the fight it, against human trafficking has really begun when this happens. Italian um, Speaker of Parliament visited, uh, visited us recently where we paid a courtesy call to Gov uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki in um, Edo State. She visited our shelter in Edo State and our Benin um, Zonal Command and she gave us a lot of promises that because she's very passionate about trafficking and she gave us a lot of assurances that uh, she was going to look into that other aspect because that was a question that I really wanted um, answers for. We know that trafficking cuts across different age groups and sexes. Is there a particular group that is more prone to this trafficking? All age groups are vulnerable to trafficking. Adults can be kidnapped for whatever reason. But yes, children are more vulnerable to trafficking because they are younger and they can easily be exploited for sexual purposes and even for the purposes of slavery. In July this year, we are launching a massive campaign. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We're matching, and we're going to invite you and all the media houses wow. will be there. Can we're going we? to invite we everyone. Can it's we? going to be the federal government will be involved, all major stakeholders will be involved. Mm -hmm. We are launching a massive campaign on uh, awareness in trafficking. You're welcome back. Would it be correct to assume that there are punitive measures that will be melted on traffickers, those that are already trafficking? And if yes, are these punishments heavy enough to serve as a deterrent to the would-be traffickers? Yes, there are punitive measures, obviously. Um, in the old law, it was not stiff enough mm -hmm. where we had either imprisonment, or the option of a fine and imprisonment wasn't that long but in the new law now we have a situation where punishment ranges from between six months to 14 years depending on the enormity of the offense plus payment of a fine so i think yes they are stringent enough to serve as a deterrent wow there's something that like i said from the beginning that motivated us to come to you today and that is looking at the records that have already everywhere of the of the distinctive impact you have really played in this particular assignment you have been given and that takes us to asking you where do you derive this inspiration from well thank you very much for your kind comments um first of all my inspiration comes from god almighty and secondly this trafficking in persons violence against women child abuse is something i've always been extremely passionate about as a matter of fact i wrote a book just before my appointment, you know, um, 
titled Parenting in the 21st Century. And this book talks about prevention of child abuse and signs to watch out for when a child is being abused and things like that. You know, it, it, it kind of has prepared me for this job because this was something that I was writing from experiences of people, experiences of my, my personal experience. When I see people on the street, I watch them, I interview them and I talk to them. And this is a job I'm really, really passionate about. I'd like to use this opportunity to express my profound appreciation to Mr. President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, for giving me the opportunity to serve Nigeria in this capacity. To Nigerians, I want to advise that you believe in yourself, believe in Nigeria as a country. If you believe in Nigeria, you believe in yourself. With hard work, focus and determination, you can make it here. And to the parents, please do not put your children under pressure. Educate your children, bring them up properly. Because I've noticed that there's a lot of moral decadence in the society today. Parents, please bring up your children properly. And to those traffickers, I want to assure you that Nati will come after you. So it's time for you to look for a better job now because we are going to come after you. And come after you, we will. Thank you very much. Thank you. founding fathers of the daily times that are here today. Individuals that have made impact and have spent 30, 40 years of their lives to build this legacy called Daily Times. We have Prince Tony Momo, we have Sam Amuka, we have Ambassador Dene Cole on his way, and we have Chifonya Mugojibu on shortly on the way. But please, before I continue, can we be on our feet so that we can give a very resounding silence to the daily times departed heroes, people that spent their lives and time to be here so that we can be here today. Thank you very much. Just let's be on our feet for one minute. We are selecting people that created real impact in the lives of others. Individuals have gone out of their way to do the stuff that will make sure that me and you live a happy life in the future. But at many times, you say news is fake and you have fake news. But I thank you for coming. Minister of Transport for the Human Development. He used to say that national unity disappeared when the railway lines disappeared. The major turning point in the way and manner we use the media to advance the source of Nigeria and to advance 
the cost of development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Every ramification of human development, Nigeria has transcended over the last couple of years. What the media has done is provide a platform for that discourse to take place. The intellectual capacity, the number of professors, shared professors alone in the Africa, in Nigeria, alone. Uh, I believe that if the four corners of society would begin with politics and government in one corner, the economy in another, culture in the third, faith in the fourth, uh, the role that media plays in shaping culture is an absolutely important one. Here. The Queen herself, Miss Nigeria. Of course, you know Miss Nigeria is a brainchild of Daily Times also. How do you feel as a Queen? I feel honored. I feel proud of the organization that I am a part of. And the uh, Daily Times is 21 years, Miss Nigeria is 60 years. So, Miss Nigeria is like a baby of, age of Daily Times. So, I'm so glad to be here at my mom and dad's event. <laughs> How do you feel? Coming to this event. I feel very good because I'm um, just about to witness um, great heroes being honored here today and I'm proud to be part of this event. It speaks to it speaks volumes about the kind of quality of individuals that we have in this country and it's something that we should uh, support. Uh, not just in this forum, but in different other fora. When you celebrate people that have done so well, who have um, distinguished themselves and left indelible marks in the sands of history, that means you are also, um, by extension, celebrating yourself. I'm so excited. It's good to know that Daily Times is already 91. Wow, 91. Do you know I don't even believe it? 91? 91. That's so amazing. Older, far older than Nigeria. Congrats, Daily Times. Secondly, on behalf of the constituency who I serve. I would like to say thanks to the Daily Times family for the honor today. I, uh, I want to see this opportunity to thank the organizers of this function. There must be a problem. Thank you very much. There must be a problem. On behalf of my colleagues in the Senate, Sorry. I want to thank you. Because there are so many people deserving this same award in the Senate. Thank you, Daily Times, for this award. Thank you for this award, and I pray that I will continue to thank you.
privilege and honor to accept this award every time that will bring us to our school. This is the spirit that will bring China out today. This is the spirit that will have the power of us. Thank you very much once again. I want us to open to this spirit. Victory is at all. One year of military service to this our great fatherland is not an easy task. I congratulate you for this wonderful award, uh, for this wonderful years of military service. Your Excellencies, Royal Majesties, Highnesses, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, I want to dedicate. This award to the following. One to God Almighty. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I feel greatly honored and must say I am elected at this award. On behalf of the political family and my family, I say thank you to the board of very and their management. To so on behalf of myself and the group of good people of Progress Day, who are giving me the first opportunity, the second opportunity to serve them. That was a good one coming from the DG of Napte Barista, Julie Oka Donley. And for the general public, the viewers, I hope you're able to learn something. Teach your children the right way. Let them know these things ahead of time. Do not allow people to take advantage of them. Let them mix up because most times it's even kids that are not allowed to move around that get into this and then they get, you know, deceived and taken away without the knowledge of their parents. And for those of you that think the world has come to an end, an end that you have to send your kids to hug, you have to send your kids to, to live with people and they, they are being, you know, maltreated, it's a time for you to have a rethink because you can actually do something to feed your kids. For the traffic this is time for you to begin to to change your lifestyle because uh, the DJ of Naptip is going to come on you very soon and Naptip in general is ready this time because this is a new dog for Naptip stop trafficking because it's not the right thing wow call on accolade anytime anywhere will be right there for you it's good to have you always see you again same time same station on the most prestigious television station AIT bye bye